Today I'm going to show you how to make this really fluffy pygmy puff plushie inspired by the little fuzzy creatures in the Harry Potter books. It's pretty simple to put together and you can even sew it by hand if you don't have a sewing machine. Check the video description for a list of materials you'll need, including the free pattern PDF. Then print that pattern out, cut out the pieces, and we'll get started. To make this plushie, you'll need three different kinds of fabric. Choose a really fluffy fabric like this one for the Pygmy Puff's body. The fluffier the better, but any color will do. You'll also need to choose a color of fleece for the face and ears, as well as black felt for the eyes. Starting with the fluffy fabric, fold it in half with the right sides of the fabric together so all of the fluff is on the inside. Then take the biggest pattern piece for the Pygmy Puff's body, flip it over, and place it on your fabric. Trace around it, making sure to leave a gap at the bottom so you remember not to sew it totally closed. I chose a pretty dark marker so you guys can see what I'm doing, but you should choose disappearing ink or something closer to the fabric color so it doesn't bleed through to the front. Next, trim around the line, but not too close. I like to leave just a big rectangle around the shape. I also like to add a tag with my logo to the plushies I make, so I did that here. Now, pin the front and back pieces together with a whole lot of pins. I found that this was the best way to keep the fur fabric together while I was sewing. We're going to start sewing using some matching pink thread right here on one end of the gap. Sew all the way around on the line and stop when we reach the other side of the gap. That way we'll have an opening so we can turn it right side out and stuff it later. I'm using my sewing machine for this step to save time, but if you don't have one, just sew back stitch by hand and make sure to knot your thread on both ends so it doesn't come loose. So here I am starting my stitches on one side of the gap, doing a few backwards to lock it in, and going all the way around the circle right on the line until I reach the other side of the gap. Finish up with some backwards stitches again, and we're all set for the next step. Remove all of the pins, then trim your excess fabric around the edge, leaving a little bit of fabric on the outside of the stitches. The fuzz kind of gets everywhere, so try to keep your workspace as clean as you can. Next, I'm going around and clipping out little triangles all the way around, being careful not to cut into the stitching. This will keep the fabric from getting bunched up on the inside once we flip it right side out. Which is actually our next step! Reach into the little opening we left before, grab the other side of the plush, and pull it right side out. I like to use a wooden dowel to push the seams out like this from the inside. That way we'll get a nice crisp shape. Tuck the little bit of extra fabric back into the opening. Now I've noticed that the fur got stuck in some spots along the seam like this. So if that bothers you, go along and lightly tug on the fur there to pull it out of the seams. Next, grab the stuffing of your choice, I'm using polyester fiber fill, and stuff the plushie one piece at a time. I grab little handfuls and push them all the way to the other side of the plushie first, then add more stuffing until I'm happy with the way it looks. Try rolling and squishing the plush once it's mostly full to see if you need any more to get the shape you want. Now we're going to use a ladder stitch to close the opening at the bottom. Pinch the gap shut and put a pin there to hold it in place. Grab some matching thread, cut a piece about a foot long, thread it onto a sewing needle and tie a nice big knot at the end. Start your needle on the inside of the gap, pushing it up into the spot where the gap ends. Then begin your ladder stitch. If you haven't done ladder stitch before and need a more detailed tutorial, I will link to one in the video description. I really like the way ladder stitch pretty much disappears when you pull it tightly in a spot like this, but it was a little tough to sew because it can be hard to see where the base fabric actually is. With ladder stitch, you end up grabbing the fold on one side of the gap and then going across to the other side like the rungs of a ladder. Unfortunately, there's fur pointing in every direction and you have to make sure that you're grabbing the fabric and not just the fur. Once you've reached the other end of the gap, pull the thread tightly to close it, then grab a piece of the fabric with your needle so you can secure it with a few knots just like this. To hide the extra thread, push your needle in near the knot you just made and push it out somewhere else on the plush. Then when you pull the thread out on the other side, you can trim it and the end will just get lost on the inside of the plush. So that is what the body shape looks like. Now we just need to add the face and ears. To make those, you'll need the rest of the pieces of the pattern, the heart-shaped face, one round eye, and one tiny ear. Cut out one heart-shaped face piece out of fleece using the pattern. I like to just hold the template onto the fabric and cut around it like this, but you can pin it down or trace around it if you're more comfortable with that. 
Then use that same fabric to cut out two tiny ear pieces. With templates this tiny, I like to cut around it in a rectangle or square, then trim away the edges until it matches the pattern shape. That way you have a lot less fabric to deal with as you turn the piece. Remember to cut out a second one. Follow the same steps to cut out two eyes from a piece of black felt. Once you're done, you should have one heart-shaped face, two little ears, and two round black eyes, just like this. Thread a needle with some black thread, tie a knot at the end, place your first felt eye right here on the heart shape, and start whip stitching it in place. Again, if you need a more detailed whip stitch tutorial, read the video description for a link. Once that eye is attached, place the second eye on the other side. You can drag the thread across the back of the piece and continue whip stitching the other eye on just like this, just don't pull too hard or the shape will bend. Once both eyes are attached, flip the whole piece over and grab a nearby stitch so you can anchor a double knot to it. Pull your needle through the loop you made, then pull it tight to knot it. Trim the excess thread and we can move on to the next step. Grab some black embroidery floss or pearl cotton so we can add a mouth and eyelashes, thread it onto a bigger needle, and remember to tie a knot at the end. Starting at the back of the piece and poking your needle up through the outside of one felt eye, draw two little eyelashes just like this. Then we'll be making a V shape for the nose using the same technique, one side of the V at a time between the eyes in the center of the face shape. Once you're happy with that, poke your needle up from the back just a bit below the center of the nose and put your needle back down right through the point of the V like this. That's our little nose and mouth. Remember to go over and add eyelashes to the other eye, then flip the piece over and tie a double knot to secure it just like we did earlier and trim the excess floss. The last little detail I like to add is a few highlights in the eyes using white embroidery floss or pearl cotton and French knot stitches, which you can learn more about in the video description. These can be a little tricky, but I think they add so much life to my plushy faces. I'm placing the first one in the upper left corner of the right eye, wrapping the floss around the needle twice before I push it back down and pull the knot tight. The second one goes on in the bottom right corner of the same eye, but for that one I only wrapped the floss around once to get a smaller knot. Repeat the same process on the left eye, but reverse them so the bigger knot is on the top right corner and the smaller one is on the bottom left corner. If you're having trouble with these French knots, practice a bunch of them on a piece of scrap fabric. Don't forget to flip over to the back and secure those with a knot like we did earlier. Now the Pygmy Puff's face is finished. It should look something like this, but feel free to be creative if you'd like to give it a different kind of expression. All we have left to do is attach all of the pieces together. Put the face where you want it to be attached and use some small pins to hold it in place. Then, using some white thread with a knot at the end, we're going to sew the face to the body using whip stitch. Start your needle under the point at the bottom of the heart shape and pull it up through the white fabric so you can hide the knot and start whip stitching all the way around. Make sure that you're grabbing the base fabric underneath with these stitches and not just shallowly grabbing the fur, otherwise it won't be as securely attached. When you get all the way back around to where you started, tie a double knot using your first stitch as an anchor and pulling your needle through the loop your thread makes like this. Then hide the excess thread like we did earlier, pushing the needle in near your knot and out somewhere else before trimming it. Be careful not to give your pygmy puff an accidental haircut. The last thing we need to do is attach the ears. They'll be nestled into the fur right here on either side of the top of the face. We'll only be sewing them along this straight edge at the bottom of each earpiece so the rest of the ear can stand up. Get your needle and some white thread ready, then poke the needle up from the back of one corner of the ear to hide the knot in the back. Then put the ear in place and begin whip stitching it on along that straight edge I showed you earlier. Once the ear feels securely attached on that side, tie a knot using one of your previous stitches as an anchor and hide the excess thread like we did before. It should look like this. Now sew on the other ear using the same steps. This can be a little tough to do just because the piece is so small and there's fur everywhere, but it'll be so cute when it's done and you're so close to being finished. Just hang in there, it'll be great, I promise. And here it is, your finished Pygmy Puff plushie. Just look at how cute and fluffy it is! The fur fabric can be really forgiving as well since it hides a lot of your stitches. This little Pygmy Puff will be so cute on your desk or shelf and it would make a really excellent gift for any Harry Potter fan. 
I really love the way this plushie came out. This is actually the first time I've worked with a fake fur fabric like this, and aside from it being pretty messy, I am so happy with it. Seriously, there's pink fur everywhere in my studio right now. I probably inhaled a fair amount of it by accident, but it was worth it. If you decide to make one of these for yourself or a friend, definitely send me a picture of it on Twitter at Lauren Myrtle. I would love to see how it comes out, and I might even put it in a future video. And if you enjoyed this tutorial, share it with a crafty Harry Potter loving friend or two. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.